Hi guys, how you doing? I hope you're safe and well. For those of you who are new here, I'm Sim UK. I'm a passionate land-based sailor, so for me, sailing simulators are the only way that I can get my sailing fix. And I absolutely love Sail Away 2. It is by far the best and most realistic sailing experience that is available today. Unfortunately, Sail Away 2 is not a simulator. The boats are completely indestructible, and no matter what you do, you cannot sink them or capsize them. So it really doesn't matter how bad a sailor you are. Sail Away 2 released in relative secrecy at the end of 2019, so don't be surprised if you didn't hear about it. It was only really announced on Facebook. I believe that that decision was a deliberate attempt to keep it from the Steam community, and the reasons for me saying that are complex and quite concerning, but I will explain. For those of you who bought the original Sail Away, the sailing simulator, which I'll refer to as Sail Away 1 from this point onwards, you might actually be surprised to learn that you already own Sail Away 2. Well, you own the basic version of Sail Away 2 anyway. Rather than releasing a new and improved Sail Away experience, Sail Away have actually changed the name of Sail Away 1 to Sail Away 2. And when they did this, they took away some of the features that you already had and have placed them behind a paywall called Pro version. So if you're an existing Sail Away 1 owner, then you have lost access to all the boats in the game, which basically means there's two really good new boats which have been added, but you won't have access to them. You've also lost access to some of the races. You don't have full boat customization anymore, and you no longer have the ability to create or join any sailing teams. If you're already a member of a sailing team, I believe you can retain that membership, but you can't create or join any new ones, at least that's how I understand it. That's all gone, and in order to get those features back, you're going to need to pay an upgrade price of £20 or €25. Euros. Now, in fairness, with the Pro version, you do get two new boats, the Ketch Cruiser and the Imica 60. And they're actually both excellent boats, fairly highly detailed and reasonably well modelled. I think there's a few issues. They include the foils and the mechanics to deploy and retract them, but they're quite buggy as well, it seems. So buggy that it appears to have broken every boat in Sail Away 2. This is a short-term bug, but it's worth noting that uh, things are a little unstable at the moment. Worse still, Sail Away 2 is almost exactly the same as Sail Away 1. The only notable addition that I can see is the ability to walk around the boat. And depending on the boat, that can be a very frustrating experience. Whilst Sail Away continue to use their horrendous right mouse click mechanic to look around and shift WASD to move around, we are gonna continuously have problems with this. Personally, I think that these two boats alone would more than justify a £20 DLC price tag. So why did they do it this way, rather than just releasing them as DLC? What worries me most is that I don't think Sail Away did this to scam people out of money. I think it's actually worse than that. They really do despise the Steam community. They disregard anything that they have to say, and they pretty much ridicule any of their frustrations. This guy here, I don't know him at all, I won't show his name, but he appears to be some sort of spokesman for Sail Away. And you can see what his attitude is like towards the Steam community right here. There's quite a few people like this, with this exact same attitude. I've got lots of examples that I could show you, but this is definitely a hindrance to progression. This appears on Sail Away's Steam page and their website. Sail Away is not a game. It is a simulation with an active community of sailors and sailing enthusiasts. There are no targets, goals, quests, sea monsters, health or mini games. Please do not buy Sail Away if you expect otherwise. That's pretty disrespectful, especially as Sail Away 2 in no way qualifies as a simulator. And there are goals and quests that you can do in Sail Away, so it's not even accurate either. 
The Sail Away community is a very clicky community. Not all of it, there's some great people, but there are these clicky little net people who sort of hover around at the top and they're blocking so many improvements to the game. It's been two and a half, three years since the game released and they're still using these clunky, crappy controls. They really don't like people asking for new features, demanding better controls or better features, and they will actively shut you down if you try to. They don't want what they see as their perfect simulator spoilt with things like realistic boat physics, damage mechanics, controller support, or heaven forbid, the ability to capsize or sink your boat. Sail Away have completely completely disconnected themselves from the Steam platform. They don't read any messages and they certainly don't reply to any either. Sail Away 2, and this pro version in my humble opinion, is nothing more than a second layer of separation. They can all play their game now without having to socialise with us annoying Steam gamers who keep demanding a simulation experience over what they've currently built, which is nothing more than an arcade implementation. They say things like this. The good thing about a simulation is that nothing can go wrong. Honestly, the Sail Away fanboys and the developer, it seems, genuinely believe that they've built a simulator. Despite saying things like that. I mean, that is the antithesis of simulation. Can you imagine how people would react if F1 2020 came out? It had no damage, no tire wear, nothing could break on the car ever and you cannot even collide with other drivers. You can't even regulate how much fuel you put in the car. Could you imagine the backlash that, that would happen if they released that as a simulator? Oh my word. Still, this is a review about Sail Away 2. And if you know anything about me, you know this will be a fair, frank and honest representation of the game. So let's jump in. The USP for Sail Away 2, as it was in the original Sail Away game, Sail Away 1, is the fact that you can sail on any ocean across the entire globe and experience real-time weather and swell conditions. For many, that alone is enough to justify a purchase. Sadly, you need not worry about bad sailing skills or decisions, as they have absolutely no consequences. All boats are completely invincible, you cannot capsize, even if you're running full sails in a hurricane. There are no collisions with other boats, not even optional collisions for races. And whilst running aground will indeed happen, mostly because of the difficult and clunky or woeful map implementation that is currently available, but don't worry, because no damage will ever be taken to the hull, the mast, the sails, the anchor, nothing at all. There are no docks, no ports, or any places for you to dock and secure the boat when it's not in use. There is an anchor facility and an auto sail option, but they're pretty unrealistic and limited. In this game, you can jibe like a crazy person. Like I say, no lines, sails or equipment can ever break. It just takes all the fun and all of the challenge out of trying to circumnavigate the globe, for example. Unless, of course, you want to race. So yes, while Sail Away 2 does not offer anywhere near enough core simulation elements in order to make circumnavigation a worthwhile experience, it does provide a decent Simcade experience for racing. There are regular community-led races with all sorts of boats, locations, rules and distances that are on offer. In the basic version you'll have access to four boat models but only one instance of each, so you can participate in as many as four races at the same time just so long as they are not running the same boat type. Pro has some additional boat models and allows three instances of each plus the two new ones. In Pro you can create and join teams and as Sail Away 2 has multi-crew enabled as it was in Sail Away 1 you really could get some incredible sailing experiences on the go with players on board actually being represented by their player icon. Thankfully, Sail Away 2 now offers a seven day free trial. So if you're a complete sailing novice, then the 14 written tutorial guides will help teach you the basic skills, the terms and the concepts of sailing. And in no time at all, perhaps 
even within the space of a week, you will probably have a pretty keen grasp of the basics. There's a 25 foot learn to sail boat, which has no foresail. This is perfect for absolute beginners. And when you feel you are ready, you can then upgrade to the next boat, which will introduce foresails and multiple sheets. The many challenges that are on offer do a very decent job of introducing you to progressively more complex sailing situations, and that allows you to test what you have learnt. And as a reward, you'll earn badges, which you can display next to your name or on your boat. At each stage of your journey, you will have control over the level of difficulty, or rather, the level of assistance that you can receive within the game. You can change this at any time and progress all the way from literally just steering the boat and the game will handle all of the sheets and the sails and the trim and then you can rank it up to near full control of every aspect and element of your sailing vessel. I say nearly because complete control of the boat is still lacking in Sail Away 2. You are not in complete control, there are things that the game will not allow you to do. As you progress to online racing, you will discover some of the best and sadly some of the worst features that Sail Away 2 currently has to offer. When racing opponents, they can literally vanish in front of your very eyes and or jump uh, many nautical miles in a mere instant. This can incur right in front of you via the leaderboard or on the map. This kind of makes the whole racing experience a bit frustrating and I'm not entirely sure that you should be able to see what heading your opponents are currently on. but. Uh, uh, maybe that is a thing these days, I don't know. There are other additional issues where going round markers and boys are not necessarily going to be registered, and at the moment everything is a little bit clunky and a little bit broken. On the most part, I've got to say that I find Sail Away 2 perfectly adequate in terms of graphics. Now, I know a lot of people won't agree with me on that, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm far more in favour of having the entire planet's oceans realistically generated than having a few photorealistic boats on a lake. And in order to have something that great, I do feel like some leeway is required. So, as it is, I am mostly happy with the graphics in-game. I've got to say they are pretty much identical to the original, uh, with a few small additions like lights which have been added to coastal buildings, I do find that quite strange that they've added lights to coastal buildings before putting lights on the boats. So when you're night sailing, the boats still have no lights, not even a torch to check the telltales. Now, I'm not dispelling the fact that they're trying to model the entire planet. I'm kind of saying, let's focus on the important stuff first. Let's build uh, ports and docks, then iconic landmarks, and then maybe then some coastal buildings but to be honest with you the coastal buildings at the moment that are available at the moment they're really quite poor and i just think time could be better spent elsewhere still none of the boats have any telemetry information in the cockpit whatsoever there are still no cabins the winches which used to work don't appear to work anymore and that's really disappointing because i love that sound that might just be a bug that's affecting me alone i can't be sure I hope it isn't something that they've got rid of because I loved it and it works brilliantly. They haven't updated the UI or the menu systems, which are slightly above terrible. The sails, they're okay, but I just don't feel they have enough detail. I find it very hard to look at them and get any kind of information back. I'm entirely reliant on the telltales. We do have seagulls and whales and even dolphins sometimes, and they're all really cool but they're all things that already existed in Sail Away 1. So really, in terms of graphics, there's nothing new here that wasn't pretty much already here in Sail Away 1. But I do reiterate the fact that what is here I find perfectly adequate. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous at times. Boat physics, sail physics, and water physics are all pretty important when it comes to a sailing simulator. Now, I am aware of the patches and enhancements to wind break surfing and waves, etc., that came as part of Sail Away 1, and the ongoing work that they have to introduce foils and all the new technical stuff that they're adding. But really and truly, you've got to say, the boat physics are not realistic at all. They are pretty much arcade physics. 
Capsizing is simply not an option, neither is hull damage or sinking your boat. Nothing on the boat can be damaged, not a line, not a sail, not any part of the rigging. Nothing can be broken at all. The sail physics, now they are simulated to a point, and this is hugely complicated stuff. And whilst a lot of accurate functionality does exist, like curve, tension, the different lines, the way that main and fore sails interact with each other appears to all be there, and the real world weather obviously adds a, another layer of simulation to proceedings, but the more you use it, the more you realize that it is actually a pretty basic implementation. There needs to be far more precision in setting up the sails. Honestly and truly, the fine tuning, it's just not there. And if you look at a sail, you can't see anything. There's no sort of um, ruffles or folds in it that give you any kind of information. You are completely reliant on the telltales. And when you're adjusting stuff, there's this pop-up percentage based info panel that just pops up and appears anywhere on the screen, quite often overlapping other things that you're trying to look at, making it difficult to see. The whole implementation is pretty poor. Now the water physics, the oceans and the waves, they look incredible. Uh, that is until they update and then there appears to be this massive stutter, which I don't recall being in the original. Hopefully that's something they can sort out. But even as it is, I could live with that. But what I do struggle to accept is the way that the water never breaches the boat, even when it clearly does. It makes the water look like Play-Doh or mud, certainly not water. When you combine all of these physics elements together, you can also get this floating effect too. Now this is a bug they are aware of and working on, but really I've got to ask you, do you still think this is a simulator with all this going on? The audio in Sailor Way 2 is, as far as I'm concerned, exactly the same as it was in Sailor Way 1, which means it's adequate, but far from immersive. Audio for me is the fundamental area required for full immersion. When what you see and what you hear are both realistic enough, that's when you get immersion. Sadly, Sailor Way lacks that level of immersion by falling short in all of the key areas I've mentioned already. At times, when you're in a race, the level of realism is obviously much, much higher, especially at the start of a race. And then there is a sense of immersion. But ultimately, that is rather short-lived, and it just gets ruined by the game's arcadey physics and lack of simulation elements. 90% of the time, you're setting your boat to maintain a heading or wind angle, and then turning the game off. I mean, it does make sense to do that at times, but in all honesty, there is nothing else to do and as nothing unexpected is ever going to happen, you really don't need to be there. The controls in Sail Away are for me, by far the worst thing. They have not changed, well not positively changed, since 2017. There are some new key binds and partial controller support has been added, but it's absolutely awful. The biggest problem, I think, is that you are required to right-click the mouse button in order to look. And now, the newest thing that's been implemented as part of Sail Away 2 is the ability to move around the boat, which requires you to press Shift and WASD in order to move. But what you've got to understand is that W and S are the pull and ease buttons for the lines, and A and D steer the boat. Mistakes are frequent and really frustrating and it's because of the controls that this happens why we can't just look with the mouse permanently look with the mouse i mean why would you why would you not implement it that way it seems ridiculous look with the mouse uh left mouse button is pull and right mouse button is ease there you go fixed it aren't i a bloody genius it kind of suggests that the developer has little or no experience at all with PC gaming or simulation. What is implemented here is just got awful. As I say, over the years, more and more hotkeys have been added, but they are ordered rather illogically. The key binding system that is currently in place is totally broken. It's poorly organized and it's missing really important options as well. It's so easy to improve something like this. One, one quick implementation could be uh, give each sale a hotkey and then once I've selected which sail I want to focus on, allow me to switch between all of the lines that are associated with it. Nobody really needs a separate keybind for each, but 
we do need a keybind system that allows us to create that if that's what we want to do. Another really frustration with the controls is that if I spend a little bit too long adjusting one of the lines and I'm just I'm looking at the telltales to see how the uh, the easing I've just placed on it is affected by the wind to make sure that everything is fine. But if I spend just a little bit of too time looking at it, then it will switch back to the main sail. And then when I go to adjust it again, I've just adjusted the main sail, which I just spent three minutes adjusting two minutes ago. It's quite frustrating. It really, really needs to be changed. Just pick it up, chuck it in the bin and build something else because this at the moment is annoying. I also, I also think it's about time that we had a keybind config file for each boat um, because they don't all have the same rigging. I'll tell you what would be nice actually is if we could actually pick the sails and the rigging ourselves, set the boat up how we want it to be rather than having to deal with it the way it is. I just think this is a simple and elegant solution to what is currently a bit of a bloody mess and has been since release. And of course, um, that would work exceptionally well with a controller. And speaking of controllers, Sail Away really does, I mean really does, need to implement full controller support. It should be a priority now, it's been far too long. Using third party software, as I said earlier, you can utilise the controller and it feels so much better, so much more natural than the current keyboard and mouse implementation. Personally, I think I would prefer to use a keyboard and mouse implementation if he just got away with that horrible clunky control system they have at the moment. If you've got the right mouse click held down and you're looking around whilst you're trying to adjust a line and you happen to mouse over another line, you've just switched lines. They need to get rid of it. Right now, hacking a 360 controller is the best solution, but it's not a silver bullet because even that is plagued with issues. And there currently is no way to reset key binds to the default at the moment. And when you try and bind a button or axes into the game, quite often it won't read the controller whatsoever. So basically what exists in terms of controllers and key binds and options is just bloody terrible and it's completely broken almost to the point where it's beyond use. And another thing which doesn't necessarily apply to me personally, but I think they should also consider adding wheel support. I think for some people on some boats, that would really add to the immersion and make great sense. So boat customization is available in Sail Away 2, just as it was in Sail Away 1. But once again, it is a little ham-fisted and clunky. If you are lucky enough to have been upgraded to Sail Away 2 Basic for free, then you will have lost some functionality. Some of the creations that are available on the Steam Workshop are like pieces of art. They are absolutely astounding, and I am absolutely certain that they didn't make them using the built-in boat customization tools available, because they're crap. It seems ludicrous to me that they've only given limited boat customization options to Sail Away 1 owners when they originally had unlimited access. Now I've got to be honest, I don't know what the restrictions and limitations are because I'd already bought the Pro license before I knew about any of this. But in order to have any restrictions applied, it just seems like theft to me. So there's plenty of gameplay modes in Sail Away 2. In single player, you can take any of your boats anywhere and sail exactly where and how you want. You have basically got total freedom. It's just lacking realism and immersion. You can invite people to race against you one-on-one -on -one, or you can join a custom or official race and you can invite people to crew on your boat, which I've got to admit, I haven't tried, but sounds pretty darn cool. The only question I have is, with the serious lack of things to do, I'm not entirely sure how well that would work, unless perhaps you're taking sleep shifts. So I highly recommend, if, you're, if you haven't already got Sail Away, then I highly recommend that you try the seven days free trial version and just see if the game works for you as it is. The base game is £32 and to upgrade to the Pro License is another 25 euros or uh, another 25 pounds or 20 euros 
and it will gain you access to the fastest boats available in game which is basically pay to win if you go and look at any of the events and challenges you will see that they are all topped by the boats that are only available in pro version i think what they should do with all of those challenges is split them have a leaderboard for each boat type and that would alleviate this pay to win issue it will also gain you access to a number of online races that you cannot enter unless you have the pro license and as I mentioned before you will get access to teams and uh, you will be able to create your own which again existed in Sail Away 1 and has been taken away and placed behind this paywall which I think is outrageous. There are so many missing features and issues in Sail Away 2. The lack of decent and complete key binding for one there needs to be a menu overhaul in fact if i'm being honest there needs to be a complete ui overhaul we need a hud that doesn't pop information up wherever it feels like often covering other information that you're trying to read some parts of the hud don't even work like the line selector in the bottom right the percentages there don't update when you're changing stuff the map being connected to the dials is nothing more than frustrating I tell you what, it would be nice if we could have access to the cabin and the map be in there and you click on it and it opens up a new screen and you're basically looking at it on a screen or a table or a tablet or something. We also need better tools for mapping and working out where the shallows are and creating routes that we want to follow because at the moment it's just clunky and awkward to use. The winches on the boats used to work in 2017 it seems they no longer do anything at all, which is a massive shame. That obviously reduces immersion. I love the sound of the winch. I really want to see that come back. We need lights on the boats. We need a torch so that we can look at the telltales in the middle of the night. We need uh, telemetry information on the cockpit. We need dials. We need GPS. We need sat-nav. We need speed information. We need TWS information. We need realistic boat physics. We need the ability to capsize, the ability to damage and sink your boat. As I mentioned, a cabin on board the boat, which would be great for viewing charts on the map. And if you are really going for full immersion, then, you know, if you're running a crew, you could actually go and rest. You could go in there to shut the game down and it all goes black. And then when you come back, that's where you spawn in the cabin and then you come out and swap. That would add huge amounts to the immersion. I also think, and this is something I asked for a long time ago, that if you're going on a long haul journey like that, water, food, electricity fuel these all need to be considerations for the boat and if you run out you're going to have to go to the nearest port in order to get more stuff this is all missing in the game and i know it's kind of role playy but it's also simulationy i mean that is what people do when they go sailing it's 2020 and this seems obvious but i'll say it anyway full controller support we also need net code that doesn't allow boats to behave so erratically in races and custom race options need to include things like boat collision, rules and penalties for those who are breaking them. I had this guy who literally sailed in my boat to give me dirty wind. Luckily I was better and faster than him. But it's still frustrating that they get away with it. I've got to be honest, I really do dislike sections of the Sail Away community. Not everyone, but there are these clicky ones that have a really terrible attitude. I dislike the developer's inability to discuss the possibility of implementing controller support and numerous other essential changes to convert this sailing arcade game into a proper sailing simulator. It is 80% of the way there. This could be the best sailing sim the world has ever seen. I mean, it already is, but it could be so much better. I dislike that nothing exists to make a sail around the world a viable, realistic possibility. I dislike how poor sailors learn nothing whilst playing this game because there are no consequences to any of their bad decisions and actions. And despite all of that, I love Sail Away 2. And if you can cope with all of its limitations and its arcade-like physics, then it really is the best sailing experience available and you should at least try the free seven day trial option. You might just like it. 
I also think it's about time that I was given complete control over my sailboat when running in expert mode. If I want to lower my main sail whilst heading upwind, let me do it, then punish me accordingly with realistic boat physics. The whole boat, the whole physics system in this game needs to be updated, it's too much like an arcade game right now. So, my final thoughts. Sail away as a sailing simulation seems to me to be confused. On one hand they say things like, Sail Away is not a game, it is a simulation with active community of sailors and sailing enthusiasts. There are no targets, goals, quests, sea monsters, health or mini games. Please do not buy Sail Away if you expect otherwise. Which basically is intended to put the likes of me in my place, but actually I'm okay with this concept. X-Plane 11 for example has a very similar model, and whilst I would prefer a career option with missions etc, I'm perfectly fine with it as it is. My issue with Sail Away is that they promote it as a hardcore dedicated sailing simulation and they use catchy statements like this. Have you ever dreamed of sailing along your favourite coastline or among the tropical islands of the South Pacific? Maybe you prefer the challenge of sailing across the southern oceans, enduring the fiercest storms they have to offer. Yeah, I want to do both of these things. I'm going to ignore the typos. But there are some glaring issues here. The details along the coastline of the tropical islands of the Pacific are awful. You might argue that that doesn't matter. It's all about the ocean and the sailing experience. And indeed... The challenge of sailing across the southern oceans and enduring the fiercest storms they have to offer sounds awesome, but it's simply not true in this game. There is no challenge. You can't damage anything on your boat, nothing can ever break. Not a line, not a sail, not a rudder, not even the engine. There are engines on some of the boats, but you, you can't damage anything. Certainly you can't damage your hull, which means that you can never sink your boat, even if you run aground over and over again. You cannot collide with other boats and there is a little to no immersion on the boat at all no cabins no dials in the cockpit to interact with you basically just sit there trim and steer and you don't even have to be careful about where you steer you can't even raise or lower the main halyard unless you're in change and sometimes doing that gives you better uh, faster movement and that's in expert mode also, steering is pretty much completely negated by the autopilot, so what you're actually doing is just sat there trimming the boat, and once you've got it trimmed out, there's nothing to do. Where's the challenge? You're barely even sailing at this point. It becomes boring, mistakes mean nothing, and there are no lessons learnt in this game, no consequences for your bad decisions. So what's the point? To me, this sounds a lot more like a trim sim, a way in which you learn how to trim your boats, and even that isn't particularly uh, simulated if you ask me i mean seriously sail away is not at all about sailing across oceans there's no need to plan your route through tricky shallows even the racing which is the only goal that i can see in this game is a subdued experience because collisions are not included okay fine so don't sink the boat but at least have collisions or at the very least at least have penalties for people who collide with you this is just not a simulator any way you look at it. It's got the potential. Oh my word, the potential this game has is unbelievable. But no, it's not a simulator as it is right now. It's it's a it's it's a complicated arcade game. I think that's the best the best I can give it. I really hope the developer reaches out to me regarding the improved control suggestions and ideas that I've laid out in this review. I'm not holding my breath. Indeed, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if something happened after the release of this video which made it impossible for the controls to work at all. I hope I'm wrong. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Hopefully this gives you some idea as to what Sail Away 2 is. I'm quite peeved with what they've done, but it is undeniably the best and most realistic sailing experience you can get on a PC right now. So if you're looking for a sailing experience, then this is it guys, this is the one. There are better games for tutorials, there are better games for around the world tours and stuff like that, but yeah, this one is top of the stack. I just hope it gets better. Thanks for watching, take care of yourselves, till next time, goodbye.